I want to explain what it means to differentiate f of x equals root x from first principles. Here is a graph of the positive square root of x. Now, of course, the square root of x could be positive or negative. So really, we have another part here, which is just got by reflecting this part through the y-axis. So it's not really a function, actually, because a function takes on just one value for each value of x, whereas uh, our curve actually takes on two values. But we'll forget about that detail for now. So I'll just consider the positive square root. So what we're doing, actually, is we're considering the slope of a tangent to this curve. So we're taking any value x on our x-axis, and we want to get the slope of the tangent at x. So by first principles, what we do is we consider a point close to x on our x-axis, a point that's a distance of h from x. I'm going to exaggerate it a bit here. It's a bit, this is not that close, but in order to be able to see what's going on to show you the, a picture, I've put x plus h a bit, a bit far from x, but the distance between these points is just h. Um, now, we evaluate the function at x plus h. So the coordinates of this point here will be x plus h, comma, whatever the function is. Well, we know what the function is. It's the square root of x. So here we would be getting the square root of x plus h, getting the positive square root. So h is some small number. h is a small number. So rather than getting the slope of our tangent, which is the green line, this line here is our tangent at x, what we do is we get a slope of a line that's close to the tangent. We get the slope of the line passing through the point we're interested in, which is this point here at x, and this second point here. So it's not touching at one point. This line here, this yellow line, is crossing the curve at two points. So the slope of this yellow line is an approximation for the slope of our tangent. The slope, the yellow line, by the way, is sometimes called a secant. Secant is close to the tangent. It doesn't touch the curve at just one point in this locality, but it touches the curve at two points in this locality of x. Okay, it touches at the, at the point x and at the point x plus h. Now the coordinates of this point that we're interested in, I'll do it in green, because we're interested in the tangent, which is green, are x comma square root of x, where we're, take, where we're taking the positive square root. So how do we get the slope of this yellow line? Well, we just look at a right angle triangle that's formed, and we take the vertical distance and divide it by the horizontal distance. So let's just uh, write down what we have to do when we're differentiating a function from first principles. We have to calculate f of x plus h, which in this case is the square root of x plus h. Then we have to do, what we have to do is calculate this quotient. Quotient is just a fancy word for a fraction. So for our particular example, we'll have root x plus h minus f of x. Well, f of x is root x divided by h. So what we have here is the vertical distance, which is actually what's on top. Um, this vertical distance here is root x plus h minus root x. We just get that from the coordinates. The y-coordinate of this point is root x plus h, but the y-coordinate of this point lower down is root x. So by subtracting the y-values, we get this distance here. Okay, you know, we've root x plus h up here, and we have root x here, and we just subtract them to get our vertical distance. That's like y2 minus y1, essentially. So this formula here is just really just the slope of a line, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 is this first point, and this second point is x2, um, x2 comma y2. Okay, the horizontal distance here is h. I have it marked down here. So we divide 
h is actually x2 minus x1, or x plus h minus x, um, which gives us h, you know, if we subtract these. So really this is just the slope of a line formula, a line passing through two points. The point we're interested in, which is the point at x on our curve, and the point a distance h away, a, hor a horizontal distance h away, the horizontal distance between these two points is h. So this is the slope of the secant. Slope of secant. Now the next step is to let h go to zero. So you can see that this thing here depends on h, but if we make h very, very small, what happens is the second point will move down to coincide with the first point, and our secant, our yellow line, will coincide with our tangent. So if you can imagine that, imagine this point here moving down the curve of the graph of f of x equals root x towards this point here. So the secant becomes the tangent, or in other words, the slope of the secant will become the slope of the tangent. That's the idea. So by letting this point move down, it's equivalent to letting h go to zero. So we take the limit as h goes to zero of this here. So I'll write out our general formula. So this is the general formula for any function. So we want to take a limit as h goes to zero of for this particular function, which is root x. Now, this is something you need to memorize. If we try to take our limit here, we're going to run into difficulties as it's, as it stands. Because what happens is, if we let h go to zero, we're going to get root x minus root x on top, and we're, we're going to get zero underneath. We're going to get division by zero, basically. We're going to get zero over zero. Now, this is undefined, turns out. Um, well, division by zero is always undefined, no matter what number we have on top. Even if we have zero on top, division by zero is not defined. So this is, you know, this is meaningless. If you go to your calculator, put in zero and divide by zero, you'll get a statement that, you know, you get an error, or in this case, result is undefined. Now, you might wonder why that is so, because you might think that zero divided by zero is zero. Because if you multiply zero by zero, you do indeed get zero. Um, so maybe it's not so clear in the case of zero over zero. It's definitely clear in the case of two divided by zero. You know, two divided by, by zero is definitely undefined because if it equals some number, say a, then that means a times zero equals two. And of course, that's not true. If you multiply any number by zero, it's two. So it's not so clear maybe for zero over zero, but you can just take my word for it. If we have zero in the de denominator, then our result is undefined and we have to take this limit in a different way. So that means we have to change the form of this here. Okay, write this in a different form so that when we do take our limit, we get something that is defined. We don't, in other words, we don't get division by zero. So here's the trick. What we do is we take our function and we multiply above and below by the sword conjugate of the numerator. Okay, the numerator is technically referred to as a sword. It involves square roots or irrational quantities. And the sword conjugate is got by changing this minus sign to a plus sign. Okay, so we just copy out our numerator but replace the minus sign with a plus sign. So we multiply the numerator by this quantity, root x plus h plus root x, but then we must do the same underneath, of course. Okay, so we don't want to change our, you know, if we take a fraction, we have to multiply above and below by the same thing. So what's interesting about this, if we do this multiplication and take our limit, then we won't get division by zero. We'll get a defined result. Now I've written the result of the multiplication here. Um, you know, we have pair of terms here, multiply by a pair here. We multiply root x plus h by root x plus h. That gives us x plus h. Um, if we multiply root x plus h by root x, and then multiply minus root x by root x plus h, those terms will cancel. See, the numerator is, has the form a minus b, the numerator of this fraction, and the numerator of this other fraction has the form a plus b. And, you know, if you multiply a minus b by a plus b, you get a squared minus b squared. The cross terms will cancel out. You'll get root x plus h by plus root x cancelling with minus root x times root x plus h, just as you get uh, plus a b cancelling with minus b a here. So it's also known as the difference of two squares. So a is root x plus h. If we square it, we get x plus h. b is root x. If we get b squared, square root x, we get x and it breaks down nicely. 
and we just have h on top and underneath we have h times this so the h's cancel you know we can divide above and below by h so we have one on top we just have a one here so we end up letting uh, taking the limit as h goes to zero of one over root x plus h plus root x well that's just one over root x plus root x okay if we let h go to zero so we're not getting zero in the denominator but this thing here is the same as one over two root x root x plus root x is just two root x so that's the slope of the tangent so for example if x was equal to three then the slope of the tangent would be one over two times the square root of three that would be the slope of this yellow line the slope of the tangent is also written dy dx or you can write it as f prime of x dy dx just comes from slope of a line y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that's when we take a limit of course actually you could think of this distance here as being dy and this distance here as being dx so we have dy over dx or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 